talking about this before on the show. We're talking about dog napping, which is on the rise. In a couple of weeks. Uh, and it's absolutely terrible, to be fair. Yeah, uh, the numbers are very worrying. Reports dog napping is now up 170% on last year. That's more than 450 dogs stolen in 2020 alone. So in a moment, we're going to speak to former police detective Mark Williams Thomas about the worrying trend. Before we do, we're joined by James Cousins, I think uh, is how I pronounce his name, from his home in Wales, who has first hand experience of what it's like to be targeted by dog nappers. Good morning, James. Thanks for joining us. Um, tell us about your situation. What happened with your dog, uh, Rosie? Good morning. Yes, we were out on our local nature reserve um, on Friday. We've been walking there uh, the last four, three or four weeks. And um, she was walking off lead as she normally does. And a couple of blokes approached her. Um, but everyone in the area is generally very friendly and welcoming. So uh, one of them scooped her up and I just assumed he was saying hello. Uh, and as I got a little bit closer, he said, if you try to get your dog back, I I'm going to stab you. I, I mean, luckily Hi. for you uh, and for... Um, uh, and for Karma as a whole, uh, you're an ex-boxer, so it didn't quite work out <laughs> how uh, they thought it was going to work out. So, so what happened? Um, so, well, well, I sort of thought I could either try and, and get away quickly, that would involve leaving the dog, which wasn't going to be an option. So uh, I managed to throw a punch at him, which sent him to the floor, but he still had a, a very tight grip of the dog on the floor. So I was trying my very best to uh, wrestle her off of him. Um, which luckily I managed to do, but the other guys started uh, trying to fight me from the, the back as well whilst whilst I was trying to get her off. But you did manage to get her? I did, yes, luckily, yeah, I managed to, to, to leave them a little bit worse for wear and uh, make our safe getaway. Done. I mean, it's a tough one, this, isn't it? Because obviously not many people are trained boxers, and at the same time, you don't want to be in fear of going to walk your dog, do you? You want to be able to walk your dog knowing that, you know, you, you, you and your dog are safe. Yeah, absolutely. Especially at the minute, it's one of the only things that you're legally allowed to do. Um, and people are now in fear of, of doing that. The thing is, James, you had that threat of being stabbed. What was it? Did you not have a gut instinct to just run away? Or was it the, the fear of losing Rosie? Was that the, the initial thing? You know what? I'm not having this. I want my dog back. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a horrible thing to somebody to say to you, but it would have been a very awkward conversation for us to come back home about the dog, so um, there, there was no way I was, I was going <laughs> to leave there without least trying to get her back. Well, that's the thing, James. I'm not one for violence, but did you give, did you give him some good tums? <laughs> did you give him some he, good he, tums he in his known, head? Um, but, but he would have only had a couple of kids, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good for you, James. Good for you. So, off the back of that, James, did you, did you then call the police, or did you get, were you able to get pictures of them, or...? Uh, well, we're a little bit out on the sticks here where we've moved to in Wales, so I was trying to give them a call um, on the way back, trying to get out, but, um, yeah, it, it kept cutting out, so we did eventually get through a few minutes later. Yeah. And, and Rosie's there. Is Rosie around? She, she, I've been trying to bribe her with treats, <laughs> but she's a bit camera shy. She's not interested. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what would be your advice to, for dog owners when they're out and about? Uh, I would just say, if you can... <laughs> if you yeah. can walk with somebody from your household, stay out in the open and don't, don't go somewhere um, enclosed out of the way like we did. Yeah, great. And a nice, uh, nice treat bribing as well. Great job, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Why do you think you were the one who was targeted, James? Why, what do you think it was? I know you've got a gorgeous dog. Well, si <laughs> Thank you, yes. Since the attack, um, I had a little look at different platforms that are advertising dogs and puppies and... Some of them are going for thousands and thousands of pounds. Yeah. Um, so actually, they just saw a young puppy, she's 21 weeks old, and just sort of yeah. fancied their chances, really. Listen, thanks, James. Let's bring Mark in. Mark, um, so what's going on with the government and, and dog thefts at the moment? Like, where are we in terms of how, how is the law categorised? Morning, uh, Dermot and Alison. Yeah, I mean, the, the situation is, is that there's been a massive increase in theft of dogs, and that is very much about the requirement of people in lockdown. As James says, it's one of the few things that people can do, can go and exercise with a dog. And of course, criminals see this as an opportunity. The government's response to this is that they are saying that they have set up specific uh, forces to look at the theft of dogs and the money that they're putting behind the police will help to reduce the amount of thefts. They're very clear that it is a criminal offence and that these should, individuals who are caught should be prosecuted. Different powers police who are the force where James's dog, uh, the attempt theft occurred. They have said that they are specifically looking at his case and that they are working certainly with him and to try and identify who these offenders were. And that they are urging the public that if they see any suspicious individuals, then please report it to the police. 
So what can we do as dog owners? I haven't even got a dog and it just makes me so angry mm. that someone would even think of doing this. As dog owners, what are we supposed to do? Because, like, firstly, I can't even run, so I wouldn't be able to, like, run away. What are we supposed to do in this situation? Well, I think dogs are an extension of a family for many, many people. They are a really loved individuals. Yeah. The theft of a dog, interestingly, is just a theft of property. There's no specific offence in relation to a theft. So if you get prosecuted for a theft of a dog, you're being theft prosecuted in the same way as you would be if you stole a mobile phone or an item of property. What some of the guidance for individuals, as James said, is walk in areas where they're much more open. One of the really significant things is to make sure that you have a recall of your dog. So training, make sure that when you are approaching other people or other people are approaching you, call your dog to heal, bring the dog close to you. And if necessary, put that dog on the lead. There are other little tips. Make sure your dog is microchipped. There is good GPS tracking now that can be put into collars of dogs, so if a dog is taken away. Uh, and try and vary your routine as far as your walk goes. But overwhelmingly, the theft of dogs is occurring at home, so in gardens. So the tip for people with, with dogs at home is make sure that you are aware uh, if they're in the garden, the best thing is to put them in the back garden so it's not potentially overlooked. But just keep an eye on your dog. You'll be amazed at the amount of time you go out walking that people will just let their dogs run a long, long way away from them. And of course, that's far, far harder to keep a control of them. Yeah. And just lastly, James, I, I, I mean, putting myself in your shoes and, I, and I, I'd agree with you, I think that there needs to be a, uh, a tough minimum sentence for, uh, for dog stealing, correct? Yeah, absolutely. As stated, if somebody was to steal a personal item from me, like a mobile phone, it's a huge inconvenience and an ordeal to go through. But it's not a family member as dog owners see their, their, uh, their dogs to be. So there needs to be some sort of a deterrent for that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Thanks, listen, guys. Thank Good talking you. to you. Great advice as well, Mark. Thank you so much, James. Thank you. Thank you.